Just in time, I'm Dr. Forrester, your science professor, and I would like to welcome you to my lab. Are you ready for an adventure? What is a scientist? There are many misconceptions about what a scientist is. You may think that a scientist has to wear a white lab coat, but this is not necessarily true. Scientists are people who observe things, compare and contrast things, and make predictions and inferences, measure things, and find patterns. Scientists are wonderful observers. An observation is the result of watching something carefully. Once scientists have made an observation, they gather information and come up with an explanation of what is found. Most of the information that they use for the explanation is based on background knowledge. Did you know that you're a scientist? Each day you do exactly what every good scientist does. No, not brush your teeth. Although I'm sure they do or they'd have stinky breath. You ask questions. Asking questions helps you learn about the world around you. I always say that the only bad question is the one not asked. Sometimes the greatest discoveries are made with the simplest of questions. Think about the discovery of penicillin. Alexander Fleming had accidentally left a culture of bacteria. The culture grew mold. The mold killed off the bacteria. He simply wanted to know how the bacteria did not spread across the entire sample. From that, one of the greatest discoveries happened, penicillin. While some discoveries are made this way, most scientists make discoveries by following the scientific method. Today, we're going to explore the steps in the scientific method. The first step is to simply ask a question. Why is the sky blue? How does the grasshopper jump so high? Why does the Earth revolve around the sun? There are millions of questions. After you decide on a question, you'll need to do background research. You can use a variety of resources to help you find out information about your question. Journals, encyclopedias, informational books, and interviews with scientists can offer a wealth of information. As a side note, be careful with the internet. While it provides a lot of information, do not believe everything you read. Always check information from the internet with other sources. With the research, you should have some good knowledge about your question. Now you're ready to construct a hypothesis. A hypothesis is an educated guess about how things work. There's a special way to phrase a hypothesis called an if-then statement. You have to state it in a way that it can be easily measured. For example, if a plant receives fertilizer, then it will grow faster than the plant that does not receive fertilizer. Now comes the fun part. This is when you test your hypothesis by doing an experiment. After a scientist has created a hypothesis, he needs to figure out if he is correct. A hypothesis is an educated guess. It's not proven until you complete an experiment or a test that it's going to give you the answer that you need. When you conduct an experiment or a test, you're looking for the variable. A variable is the one thing in the experiment that will change. You gather your materials, set up your lab. Just be sure to get approval from an adult for your experiment before you start. You will observe and collect data. Once your experiment has been completed, you will have a lot of data. Data is factual information that you collected during your experiment. For example, You've been measuring your plants with fertilizer and those without. You found that the plants with fertilizer have been measuring taller. All these results will have to be analyzed. You will analyze your data and make a conclusion. So now, you will simply have to ask yourself a question. Was your hypothesis true, partially true, or false? This is the step where you report your results or ask yourself, was your hypothesis correct? If your plants with fertilizer grew better, then you could state that your hypothesis was true. If you were wrong, you might want to go back and retest using another hypothesis. Either way, you'll want to report your results so other scientists can learn from your work. In fact, Alexander Fleming's work was followed by other scientists who were able to produce penicillin inexpensively. The next time you have a question, See if you can apply the scientific method. Maybe you'll discover something no one else has. Like I always say, every day is a new adventure waiting to happen.